It's, um, it's a really great pleasure to talk to Renzo about episode three, um, partly because it's a video which has really sort of knocked me sideways. Uh, I didn't think that it was possible to, uh, or I was getting a bit jaded with the idea of making uh, video art about politics uh, for a long time, and I, had, I think I'd become quite disillusioned with the prospect of the possibility, and seeing uh, Renzo's piece um, certainly um, stopped me short and made me uh, think a little bit more again about what are the possibilities um, for um, video art or art in general's um, approach to the real world, the, real, the world of politics, uh, to the world of international relations and to the relation of the West perhaps to the rest. Um, certainly I think it's a very provocative film and I, uh, I wouldn't want to skirt around um, that provocation. So maybe we should perhaps start a little bit to talk about uh, this very mutable and uh, difficult uh, question of exploitation. Uh, in many, because exploitation in, in this video, uh, I hope you've all had a chance to look at it. Uh, I should think many of you have. Exploitation seems to exist at very many <coughs> different levels at a kind of very strict uh, economic, in a very strict economic definition, in a moral, uh, in a moral dimension too. Uh, and part of the reaction that I think I certainly felt, and, and perhaps many others do, um, to this narrative, to this story, which is also a documentary, but is also a kind of uh, story about itself, about the business of making what might be a documentary, is that it's very difficult to unpick um, at clearly uh, and secure, or separate clearly, um, what is a factual um, <coughs> observation about perhaps the reality of a form of exploitation, uh, but also a more subjective and more personal uh, and more uh, dangerous notion of what it means to exploit. So without over-determining it, uh, for Renzo, and understanding also that we have maybe 40, 45 minutes uh, to talk about this, um, at which point it would be very good to hear uh, your questions and comments. Uh, so without wanting to uh, try to unpack the whole thing in such a short space of time, let's start a little bit maybe with that. Exploitation. Well, for sure, there's a lot of uh, exploitation in the world. And um, um, I, I set out to make a film that deals with its own terms and conditions, a, a film that deals with itself pretty much. Obviously, there's a long history in uh, contemporary art or in modern art of uh, pieces that take responsibility for what they are, for, for uh, you know, like a Robert Ryman painting, white paint on a white canvas hung up in a white gallery. Uh, or Joseph Kozel's five words in blue neon, um, which are five words made in blue neon hung on a wall. I, tr I set out to make a film that could look itself straight into the eye, that would not merely show an outside, an outside phenomena like uh, exploitation in the Congo or penguins on the South Pole or you know whatever subject one could make a film about. I, I set out to make a film that that would understand itself, more or less, that would, um, uh, that, would, that would be aware of what it is. Um, and this, as I say, is, 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 has a long history in, in, uh, within art history. Um, so rather than showing, making a film of this outside phenomena, being the Congo, which has a very long history of its natural resources being exploited by outsiders coming in. Um, rather than, than I, I, I use this in a way to make a film that would uh, deal with its own exploitation. In fact, as the film demonstrates, images of poverty and the industry that is propelled by these images uh, is uh, Congo, if not Africa's most lucrative export product, of which the poor, just like with all of the other export products, cocoa or diamonds or gold, don't seem to benefit very much. Um, so I, I thought it was a very useful uh, exercise for me to make a film that would deal with its own presence. And this includes, obviously, that it's a uh, part of this exploitative industry, being the imagery of the, the production of the imagery of poverty. So I don't know if that's, it's, I'm, 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 the film is very much, it shows that it's exploitative, it shows that there's a lot of exploitation everywhere <coughs> in that country, 
and it um, it tries to deal with the fact that it in itself that even showing that there is poverty and exploitation is itself yet another industry that doesn't help the poor. Mm. So the film just tries to be aware of what it is. That that is um, a very direct uh, way for the film to make one conscious of the fact that there is always a kind of um, an, an outside or, or a, a, an area of the image of reality that we get normally of that context, of that political and social situation, which is left out. Uh, the film, so, so at a very d direct level, there's a, there's a structure in the film which says, have a look at, uh, see what else is missed in other images mm -hmm. of uh, this situation. Mm -hmm. But it, so, so at one level, there's that kind of very uh, political um, analysis or an analysis of the politics of obscuring mm -hmm. certain politics. Mm -hmm. But there's also, as you say, uh, an internal or a, uh, an art historical or a, an art aspect to that too. Mm -hmm. It's kind of uh, self-consciousness of Well, that's the great, one process. of the great things about uh, this, this tradition within contemporary arts that, um, that, that the very fact that you look at your own, that a work of art <coughs> looks at its own, its own terms and conditions, by, by virtue of that fact of this uh, auto-referentiality or this introspection or by virtue of that, one can generate knowledge about an outside world. Knowledge that would be inaccessible if one just tried to show outside, if one would just go around filming things. Um, uh, in, in the Congo, for example, uh, we would miss a lot, of, a lot of elements that are in this film exactly because this film tries to deal with its own presence. For example, yeah. since I can't film many of the, uh, let's say, white people in Africa committing all kinds of doing all kinds of things. The only people that we see in our news media doing things in Africa, white people, are the ones helping and aiding Africa. Obviously, we're involved in many other things as well. But it's pretty much impossible to film those because they will just won't give you a guided tour of their diamond sm smuggling or whatever well, it is they're doing. Shoot you. So, well, I don't know what <laughs> they would do. I didn't try. But, um, <laughs> uh, but I can take over all these roles. You know, th there is obviously, I'm visible within oh. the film. But the, the, the point being that, particularly there, that you as a subject and author mm. are already conditioned by the limits that are given to you as to where you can be a subject. Well, I can a actually subject. transgress these limits by incorporating both my own, let's say, physical presence, but also the, this, this, um, this, uh, this attempt of mine to make this film auto-referential, to make this film to, to have the film deal with its own presence, with its own limitations, etc. These two things generate knowledge, let's say, mm -hmm. that are not limited to what it is to be a film about Africa, but it shows you many things <coughs> about, let's say, the Congo. But the, uh, uh, obviously a key aspect of the film is your presence. Mm. Not, because sometimes your presence is uncontroversial, <coughs> it just happens to be that you seem to be the guy who, like many other f um, video journalists, goes, looks, talks with people, uh, records that, edits it, and so on. But there are other moments where something else, some other person starts to emerge, or some other figure is invented mm -hmm. or created. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's perhaps, is that perhaps at the point at which, or, or for me, an interesting question is, is that odd journalistic persona who's a bit more than the journalist, or somehow to one side, or somehow uh, slightly uh, perverse, mm. is that kind of individual also the kind of individual that an artist might be? Because you know, you're not painting Robert Ryman's, and you're not making gallery works in neon. Mm. Uh, you're, make, you're, you're operating as a kind of well, sure. free, floating. Most of the time, the, the, these artistic strategies that we have uh, invented over time they're used only to make these things that <coughs> can be shown in galleries and that generate knowledge about themselves or yeah. maybe about the art world. Or uh, I, I do think that these very same strategies, like, uh, as I said, uh, a piece of art describing itself, can be used to generate knowledge about the art side, about the world at large. Mm -hmm. And, of course, I set out to do that. I think it would be, you know, within the arts, anything is possible. You know, you can do this or that, make it disappear, open it, uh, paint it white or black, or 
you cut it into pieces, mm. um, as long as it doesn't have any significance to the outside world. And I, I try to use these same strategies, let's say, to, to generate knowledge about the world. Um, now, about this persona, I, 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 I set out to um, adopt the role, more or less, of the television spectator or the, cons the average consumer of uh, things coming out of Africa. Uh, we all are. Um, with the agenda of such a person going there. So, um, yeah, I, I think all in all, the, the, the way I am there is, is it's, it's, it's objective more than anything. I don't think it's crazy or artistic, or I think mm. it's objective. But the, the, the goods, as it were, not just the physical goods, but the benefit mm. that you bring mm. is completely in parallel to um, the benefits and the goods that are brought by the aid community. Yeah, yeah, I double it. What they do, I do it too. So uh, since there's many things of, of their activities I can't film, I just copy it and I do it too. You know, we, we go around the world and we tell people that, you know, they have to think uh, rationally and get into the market economy, etc. Mm. Otherwise, they'll otherwise they'll always stay poor, and uh, and so that's what I do. Or uh, you know, we have many pop stars going to Africa <coughs> and then you know helping the poor, and then obviously we see them on television singing songs. So that's what I do. Or um, or you know, in the end, we don't really want to give pay more for our chocolate or coffee or uh, all of the other things coming from there. So I just tell them, I just tell them, well, unfortunately, this is how it's going to be. Mm. Um, so as I say, I think it's my role in that film is as close to objectivity as one can get. But you start off, the, the odd thing is that the neon and joy poverty, mm -hmm. it starts off as a project, you know, when, you, when you're first uh, opening the film and you're kind of talking to yourself about the fact that people really need to um, you know, help themselves. Yeah. That, as you say, it sounds like the kind of rationalist, kind of a, ameliorative project. To, what we need is not for people to be dependent, blah, blah, yeah, blah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. What we need for, is for people. So enjoy poverty, as you, as you put it there. At the, towards the beginning is certainly um, an offer to take profit. Yeah, start from an emancipation project, an but economical. By, but by the end, you're frustrated, and you're there grumbling to yourself in the forest about your own vanity mm. and about the fact that maybe one cannot do anything. So That's what we all do in the end. We start some, some development project. Of course, our development projects, they're, they're not really meant to develop. Um, they're meant to secure economical interests. So in the end, they all fail because they're not meant to do anything else but fail. And then, but of course, we won't say, I was just here to make it fail. We will say, oh, it's such a pity. I tried so hard and now it doesn't work. And maybe it's because these people, they don't have the same type of, um, what's the word, attitude towards life, or maybe they don't want to get up in the morning. So yeah, you never know what will happen. So mm. I, I reproduce, let's say, all these things. Of course, the funny thing about the film is that it's at the same time a reproduction, a ready-made almost, but at the same time, it's also very sincere and deep attempts of somebody, me in case, to penetrate the piece of the world and penetrate our own our own attitudes towards that piece of the world and, 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 and you know it's it's both a, a, a comedy one may almost say mm. and a very sincere attempt to understand the world mm. and well yeah can you say something about um, how those people who are, who are pictured represented in the film uh, understood the relationship that they had to the images that were produced of them because it's a by it, me or by other well people? not by you but also by mostly by everybody else mm. because that's understood as being an activity which goes on all the time yeah but it, it struck In me some parts yeah, yeah. it was that particularly towards the end where there was the there is the discussion uh, about well what are you going to do with this mm. film I you know this first of all it's it's in English because the white people speak English who are yeah. going to see this but then there's also there rather uh, difficult uh, dialogue about are you going to come back with this mm. and show it here mm. and and w it led me to kind of uh, ask my s or it, it struck me that that seems to uh, suggest a broader issue about how people in extremely um, uh, straightened 
economic political circumstances in Africa, for example, in the mm -hmm. developing world, uh, start to understand their dependency on the West's uh, processes, you know, how they actually become, uh, to, to a certain degree, um, <coughs> supplicants or, or, or petitioners. Do they understand that you might do something really good? There's always this kind of tension there. Is this guy well, going to help us? Is well, this guy on the going one hand, to? There is all kinds of industries um, supported by our military that extract the gold and the diamonds and all of these other things, not just Africa, but in many parts of the world. Now, on the other hand, and, and, and so we, we pretty much live of that. On the other hand, there is, um, uh, we have this aid industry that mm. then goes back and tells people to grow peanuts and to wash their babies and to use mosquito nets and, you know, how to better their lives. Um, for most people, uh, like the, 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 the common folk in, in, in a country like that, it's impossible to change anything in these economical or political relationships towards their own leaders, towards the West, towards, you know, there's, they, they can't do anything. The only thing they can, let's say, do is, um, uh, and there's no elections, and there's civil war all the time, etc. But, you know, every once in a while, a, uh, uh, some donor or, or uh, aid agency comes by and then you just hope that, you know, by being pictured, you will, in one way or the other, gain something from it. Of mm. course, people are uh, often in very desperate situations. So, um, whatever chance comes by to, uh, you know, maybe something will fall off the wagon and maybe you can pick it up and maybe you can do something with it. You never know. Mm. But I don't think there is a... a, a a deep belief that structurally things would change if only they were pictured. No, they, they have a lot, of, a lot of experience with people coming and telling them that now we will develop you and, and in the end they are just you know, working long days and mm. it's... You found, that very, you found that experience to be very common and well understood among some of the people that you were Well, people on these, on, on these plantations, for example, that uh, you see in the film, they've been working there since, I think, 1910. And they're still living in mud huts. Mm. So, I mean, they don't have a lot to expect. But then, of course, if some other power that they, uh, sorry, person that they think may have power, such as I, comes by, they hope that maybe I can have some leverage vis-a-vis, mm. uh, -vis, etc. Of course, I don't. In the end, we all see this film and nothing will change there. So. Um, this is what I wanted to make clear in this film. This is, I mean, to a, certain, to, to a degree, we've, we've spoken mostly still about the idea of that there is a political reality, mm. that you take political political position. Responsibility. But you have a, you, I mean, the important thing is you have a version of events which you will stick by. It's not just, not simply, because what's interesting, it's not simply a process of creating a self-referring or, or articulated, self-conscious work, mm. of video art. Mm. And it's not just about um, saying there is a reality that you don't appreciate normally. Or rather, is it, it is the fact that you are saying, well, there is another story here. So in that, in that respect, you, there is a, an alignment, of a kind of politics to you and to your position, which is not simply um, well, maybe the, I'm the business of relating uh, any kind of politics to art, because what I find sometimes very uh, dull about a lot of what might be seen as a political artistic practice is that the politics are very uh, well understood and become, in a sense, very familiar and do not have a great deal of um, insight beyond what everybody is supposed to imagine about certain things like the Iraq War. Mm -hmm. or so, 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 for example, in, in this work, one of the important tensions for me is that you're making, you seem to be making quite a, a sharp uh, and focused criticism of the aid industry, which is uncommon. So, so in as much as you might be a political artist, it's just about being, a, you know, for me it's about being a political person who has interesting politics. Mm. Well, I don't see myself, maybe I'm talking too much here mm. uh, and disclosing too much of my, let's say, personal beliefs, but um, um, within the film, as I said, I just try to be very objective. Um, there is uh, an aid industry. Um, of course, it helps here and there, but in most places, it doesn't help. Um, uh, there is an aid, and, uh, and, and, and this aid industry seems to be detained entirely by, let's say, Western companies or mm -hmm. Western photographers, Western 
you know, most of the money, this, these are just facts, most of the money of the egg industry flow back to the Western world. Mm -hmm. um, even if Doctors Without Borders obviously saves many children and are doing excellent wor work uh, throughout the world, most children are not saved by them. Um, uh, whereas w when we look in the media, we would believe that you know every time you see a starving child, it's pretty much there is an aid organization helping you, helping the child to survive, because that's how the journalists get into that territory in the first place. They travel with the aid industry. Um, but from my perspective, I, I, I just try to understand once again this film. What can it film? What can't it film? Hmm. Um, uh, where is it being led to? It's obviously m me, my, my little one-man production company, is obviously being led to places where the aid industry is, because that's where the cars go and where people give you access, etc. But then, all of a sudden, I find out that in most places they're not, and, and mm. but no journalist ever goes there. Ha so I just try to understand this film once again. Yes. Yeah. So, I mean, one one question to to ask the background to this is how. Do you proceed to develop the project? I mean, how long did it take, mm -hmm. and what was the uh, what was the brief you set yourself, and how much did it become modified mm. um, in the process of production? And then, of course, further on, how much did it become a project of redevelopment when it became something to be edited mm. and to be constructed? Uh, obviously, the film is a construction. So, uh, throughout, I, I worked on it. I was in the Congo for about two years, and then. When I came back, I was extremely tired, and it took me another year to do the editing. Um, um, so it took me a long time. It is a construction, but I should say that it's entirely what I imagined it to be. Right. Yeah. So, so you <laughs> does that mean that there was no insight, <laughs> in the sense that um, what I'm what I'm intrigued in about is how one discovers things. Well, I didn't know I didn't know anybody in the Congo before I mm. went there. I, I, I met a, uh, a Polish Catholic priest sitting next to me in the airplane when we uh, when I when I first flew to Kinshasa, the capital of the Congo, and he offered me a place for the night. Um, so that was the first person I I, I, I met. Um, but I did know that I wanted to make this film that would you know uh, reveal its own function and and, and therefore reveal the power relationships between the ones watching and the mm. ones being watched. I think that is really central to my yes. ideas about it. That I, I, uh, w one can film this outside phenomena and then be here and consume it, watch it, but what I'm interested in is this relation between those two. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm not interested in that really, I'm not uh, really interested in the Congo, nor I'm not really interested in the consumption of it. Or the, the, yeah. I'm interested in, 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 the, uh, in, in, in the relationship, the power relationships between those who watch and those who mm. are being watched. Um, and I, I, I had set out some ideas for myself, but I didn't know where I would find them or with whom. I didn't know, I had no idea that there were actually plantations where people make uh, so little money per month. Mm. I had no idea, mm. um, because I just read the newspaper. Um, but then after a while, uh, I, I, I found out some strategic locations in which I could start my emancipation project. Uh, Neon advertisement, which advertises to them, but obviously it also advertises to us, the consumers mm. of whatever it is they, they give us, including the image of their poverty. Um, and I thought that this neon sign that I had made in, in Brussels before I went to the Congo for the first time, uh, that this neon advertisement thing would, would somehow dismantle these power relationships because of its double functions. On the one hand, it can help people over there understand that poverty may be an asset. Mm. Uh, it may also, in some other locations where poverty is not an asset because nobody's interested in it, it could help them just to accept it because there's nothing to be done against it. And at the same time, it could also help them, uh, it, it could be the, the advertisement of their, uh, of their homegrown uh, local uh, organic uh, poverty produce. <laughs> and. Um, and it could be for us to, you know, to, to lead the, the, the audiences to, towards the consumption of this poverty, you know, to, to advertise. So I thought that this one neon thing, I thought well, if I set it up on, on, on a good location, it will somehow break, I don't know, break through or break open, dismantle, unfold mm. these power relationships. That's 
but this was just an abstract idea. Mm. And then gradually over time, I found people, places, yeah. There were some key moments of that neon's function. And the particular one that we, we were mentioning before, we started this talk, um, was the, the way in which it was reported by that group of journalists yeah. who somehow made a fuss or were very upset about well, they don't this. Well, they seem to be very gentle within the film. They, they, they happily photograph it. But uh, yeah, later on, you know, many people are, are, including me, and I show it openly, we are guided by our, by our interests. And we will like what, 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 what helps us further in life, and we will dislike what halts us. And uh, they ob apparently thought that I was an obstacle, and then they, they <coughs> yeah, my press accreditation was then withdrawn. But, yes, but it was it was very evident that that you were they felt that your production or the your activity at producing this kind of disturbance, mm. this disturbance which is actually a not part, it's about not being part of the script, mm. isn't it? Effectively, I could, yeah. um, led them to effectively report you, yeah, yeah. and to put uh, attempt to or to make make sure that the UN would take, you know, discredit you. Yeah, which has, you know, it's, it's pretty hard in the Congo to be there as a white person uh, if one does not have one, uh, a badge like they, mm. you know. Issue. Because you suddenly are no longer what? Be, you're no longer able to? Well, the badge, the badge is just security. If you have a badge that says UN, uh, for all your average militia leader thinks a helicopter is flying around, and then if they will do something against you, then we, this will have repercussions. Mm. And therefore, everybody has such a bad. So uh, the physical presence of an organization becomes the presence of the, the ability to produce yeah. any knowledge or yeah. any information or yeah. any news. Yeah. 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 Mm. And I think it's, it, it's uh, yeah. I mean, our, our news is, is it, it hardly ever comes out of this, these guided tours, mm -hmm. you could almost call it. Guided tours in which we see people, you know, outsiders, Westerners, um, helping Africa. These are the guided tours, and this is what we see there. But it's a, it's a constant theme that the image itself is a kind of matter or a kind of material. I mean, yes, it's, as you say, it's a kind of resource yeah. um, which could be exploited. More, just to take one step back from that, it's it, it becomes very evident that uh, an organisation that can project people mm -hmm. under its protection produce is, is the organ is the machine that produces all images mm -hmm. that there's this um, this business of, of being a physical body there is not simply about just go wanting to go to the Congo and seeing what one finds but is is completely uh, orchestrated by a set of uh, limits uh, licenses yeah well I mean of course there's always people that go outside and then and, and I, I think it's too black and white what you now say. Okay. But, but generally speaking, if you just read 100, 100 articles mm. uh, on, I, for example, I read most yeah. articles published in the New York Times on, on the Congo, and it will indeed, in 90% of the cases, it will follow the same script. Mm -hmm. yeah. The same script, you know, uh, African rebels being drugged, raping, uh, because they want the diamonds, and, uh, and then the UN intervenes, and then, the, uh, yeah, and then in the end it gets slightly better, but unfortunately it doesn't work because these militias don't want to stop fighting, something like that. Mm -hmm. and then this is pretty much the script I reproduced in the film as well. In the end I say, well, it's a hard task here, I can't handle it, and you know. Mm. But anyway, that's, there, there is very little dissent, I guess. Mm. Uh, and, and because most stories are created in the exact same way. The, the, the most, key absence then is, is the reporting of how those power influences, the militias, the government, the factions, are, might or not, might not be supported by external influence. Well, they are. Hmm. They are. It would be crazy to think that in, 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 many, in most places in the world where there's, a big, uh, where there's many resources, that there is military war or economic war or, you know, there's, et cetera, coups and, and uh, you know, uh, in one way or the other, subsidized or orchestrated by the West, as of course we know Iraq and many other places around the world, 
but in the Congo, when, where there is some of the biggest reserves in uranium and gold and uh, in diamonds, there the war would be for the, between those little crazy African militias with Kalashnikovs. Mm. Only as if you say, you say it's crazy that people wouldn't notice this, but why do you think that it's so little? Or so, I mean, apart from a very straightforward uh, um, criticism that, well, of course it wouldn't be because our interests are there and therefore, you know, the West industrial I guess because we can afford to. We can afford not to talk about it. But it seems genuinely completely absent from public yeah. debate. Yeah. Uh, but, but weirdly so. Mm -hmm. Like, it shouldn't be too hard to get this. Um, yeah, I... I it beats me, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Shall we, um, I might ask people to ask questions at this stage, because I think it's worth doing. So I, I'll take um, like two or three in a row and I'll come back. Yes, um, I think it's easy to talk to because you ask um, questions of important lights and they brush you aside because you haven't anticipated the obvious reply they're going to get. I mean, the hospital manager says, well, these locals who are just studio photographers won't be as good as Westerners. Well, of course they won't be. I mean, they don't, it's up to you to take them away and post them for a few days. I mean, I know personally Salgado, the famous Brazilian, who's very good at, I mean, his painting, his photographs of Bombay, uh, which are usually of poor people, he, he's thinking about the geometry of them. He does everything right and he's thinking about the black and white. You could have posted them, you know, you probably think, I'm just about walking around, I know they're from Europe. What about the, the hospital and plantation owner? Maybe one, yeah. one yeah. it's a lot. So, so that, that's, a good, that's a good point. <laughs> okay, you should. You should. Sorry, I didn't. Can you well, we'll come back to we'll, I'll, I'll bring the question in, but. Uh, no, start with one, otherwise, I yeah, completely okay. don't know. So, so there's, there's, there's certainly an issue that you could have done, you could have tried harder to. Um, <laughs> to first of all make them better photographers or uh, to challenge uh, the plantation manager or owner with regard to the statistics that he was sort of defending himself with with regards to how, yeah. what an adequate infant mortality rate is. Sure, but I, I think to start with the plantation owner, I, I, I have no real reason to challenge him because I think what he says is exactly what we all say. Sure, people die, but that's the way the world goes. I mean, if, you know, if, if, if the alternative is that prices will, will rise, then, then we just won't have that. Uh, he's very, let's say, uh, he's very generous in, in just giving me the common answer, which is I'm not accountable for what these people do or how they live. That's their problem. I'm just here to produce this stuff that we need on the world market. Mm. I think that's, you know, of course I could have challenged him, but why, why wouldn't he give, he gives the perfect answer for what, you know, I don't think he's any more to blame than, 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 than me or the next guy. Uh, there is an accumulation of self-interest in a way. Uh, the Doctors Without Borders guy don't, doesn't want these local photographers to make pictures because they won't get them published in, in, in big newspapers. So there's no interest for him to... Uh, etc. Um, um, news photographers don't go to these plantations because they're hardly ever in the media. I don't see them anyway, uh, because they're simply not flown in by the plantation organization. They're flown in to other places. So, and, and the plantation owner, it, maybe he could pay more to his people, but then he'll be uh, there. Will the, 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 his competitors from uh, I don't know, uh, maybe Kenya or uh, or Bolivia or. Uh, uh, yet another country will will get him outside of the market. So he has no, in a way, they're all just little parts of a big machinery mm. that nobody has control over. I just try to show that, that I, I try to make a panorama of all these interests. Mm. Uh, I didn't particularly want to focus on any of these uh, uh, actors. Uh, now, with the local photographers, I, I did spend a lot of time with them, but for... Um, Cinematographic reasons, we, we, we made it very short, and and I'm I'm still working with them, and, and they're getting really good now. And I, somebody gave me some Nikon cameras, and where I'm sending them, so they're really getting good. And I think that their pictures are are way better uh, than most uh, news uh, 
pictures because because once again they're not just representations of poverty. The guys themselves are poor. They hardly how, know how to handle a camera. Their material is lousy. So the medium is a, is a message in a way in their pictures. So we'll we'll get them into the art circuit and sell them for a lot of money. It doesn't. You're gonna sorry. <laughs> well, well, their their pictures. We'll exhibit them. I don't know. Maybe. Mm -hmm here or elsewhere, <laughs> and then people can buy them, yeah, for mm -hmm. a lot of money, and mm -hmm. then you can send them Art will save them. Yeah, um, <coughs> watching your film, uh, I was really moved the first time I saw it, um, and I watched it again today, uh, and I was struck by the idea, that, by the feeling that the message in World Poverty was as much for, for me as for them. It is, um, yeah. Yeah, that's a really good question. There is an enormous gap. There is a gap between some awareness we can all share here about how media work and, and what art can do and all of these strategies on the one hand, and on the other hand, the, ver the, the bare fact that these people are suffering enormously and that this project, once again, won't really help them in the long term or, you know, unless something happens all of a sudden. But, um, yeah, it's, it's true, it's a big gap and it's, it's hard to, uh, to bear it in a way. But I think it's, it, that's exactly what makes a film so truthful. That uh, it shows that it's once again a film about Africa and once again it's us that will in one way or the other in, on an emotional level benefit <coughs> from it. And once again, they won't really the ones being photographed. And the only difference is that this film shows that. But in terms of who will benefit from it and who won't, it's not different than any BBC report about Africa. I, I guess what I was trying to get at is, uh, I understand that, but you know, what about you know, the, the sort of personal debt you owe them mm. when you're feeding them? Mm. You know, these people who are starving, who you have obviously taken upon yourself to help them in a way, mm. but at the same time, Well, maybe, maybe it's painful for them. It may also be painful for me. But of course, the goal is that it's painful for you. Well, it was. And <laughs> so that's achieved then. Um, because we always run around with these grand schemes, like you do this, and you do that, and we'll film you, and you'll export this, and we'll bring you that. And then in the end, nothing. Uh, this film shows that. And um, 